Welcome back to Operation Overhaul everybody and today we're working on a 2000 Honda Accord with a 2.3 and an automatic transmission. We will be doing a transmission swap on this supposedly but I wanted to throw my scanner on here first before we started tearing the transmission out just to make sure it wasn't something that he could fix a little bit cheaper. But if you would stick with me and chum on. Alright so we're already in the fault code setting on the transmission portion. As you can see, we have a P0740, 730, and 780. Uh, these are permanent DTCs. They're not pending or any of that. But uh, that is a torque converter, clutch system failure, incorrect gear ratio, and a shift malfunction. I did check the fluid on this. The fluid was full when it was running. And I did uh, smell it and look at it and it is extremely burnt and it smells burnt as well and I'm pretty sure that it's fried so what we're gonna do we're gonna turn it off we're gonna get it raised up and start pulling everything off and I'm gonna show you the step-by-step -step procedure for that so if you would just stick with me while I get everything set up for you as you can see I removed everything on the passenger side already I got the axle out and I'm gonna show you how I did that on the driver's side I just wanted to make sure I had all the uh, right sockets and everything so I didn't give y'all any misinformation. But what we're going to do, I'm going to take you over to the driver's side right now and we'll show you what it looks like uh, taking one of these out. So the first thing that I like to do is remove the axles out of these. And to do this, like I said, I already showed you on the passenger side that I removed it, but we're on the driver's side now. And to remove the axle out of the transmission, before you uh, remove the transmission, you're going to want to remove the axle nut, which is a 36 millimeter, the tie rod end, and then the lower control arm castle nut that holds it to the knuckle. And the knuckle, the tie rod, and the upper control arm, if you want to take the entire knuckle out, are all 17s. And then the axle nut itself is a 36. But I'm going to remove all this stuff, and then when I get it, off I'll show you how I pry the axle out of the transmission and I'll be right back. As you can see I got the axle out of the knuckle assembly. Um, this tie rod boot is busted and I'm gonna let the customer know, tell them right now be a good time to change that while they're out or while the transmission is out. But all I did was just loosen the lower control arm. If you want to take the axle out completely you're going to have to remove this uh, nut and bolt that holds the strut uh, fork to the lower control arm. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to pop the axle out and lay it on the exhaust, which is in there. And all you got to do is just get a screwdriver or a pry bar, get behind the axle, and just with like a good swift motion pry it, and it should pop right out. But... I'm going to pop that out real quick and I'll show you what it looks like. As you can see, I got the axle out and the case was leaking really bad. It was leaking on the two halves. So, but we got it out and that's probably why it was causing all the slipping and all the metal shavings because it was low on fluid. But I'm going to get back underneath here in a minute and we're going to start taking some of this stuff off. We're going to start by removing this, this cable and then taking some of these uh, lower bell housing bolts off and this bell housing cover. All right, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna remove this cover right here. And this bolt, this one and that one right there, they're 14 millimeters. Okay, and then up in here where the axle is a little bit, we have to move it. There is a 17 right up here, and it's right over top of the exhaust. And if you want to, you can put one of these back in to hold it so it don't fall down on you. Now I'm just going to throw it in like that real quick. All right, now... With that out, we can get access to the torque converter bolts, and all these are 10 millimeter bolts. There should be eight of them. But first, I'm going to pull the, uh, this cover right here off. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to remove this cover, but we're going to move this cable right here first. 
There's two 10 millimeters right here, and then the cover is held on with three 12s. We'll move the cable first. We'll move it enough so I can get my um, ratchet and, and extension up in there. I'm gonna break them all loose first. Oh, that one and that one were loose already. Mm, you can see all the fluid flying everywhere. Okay, now we got this right here. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get a punch or a uh, chisel knock this back over so I can take this nut right here off and we can just slide this whole unit off. Doesn't take much to get that moved. Sometimes it'll be a little bit of a pain to get it off, but move it like that. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to move you. So what I'm going to do next is go ahead and take these torque converter bolts out. They're only 10 millimeters. And this, you can just put a wrench on them, and they should shouldn't be like super tight. Like I said, they are only 10 millimeters. And that's what they look like right there. If the engine has some miles on it, they, the engine should turn fairly easy. As you can see, I'm turning it with the 10 millimeter bolt. Fairly easy. This car does have like 160,000 or something like that on it. If I remember correctly, maybe more than that. I don't remember the sad thing is this guy just bought this car like a month ago from a buy here pay here place and the transmission went out and he's got a 2 sensor code and once I get these off I'll show you why he's got a 2 sensor code he got one for two reasons actually one there's no catalytic converter on it I'll show that to you once I get this through. Also, there should be eight uh, torque converter bolts on this. Figure I'd give y'all a little back history and a little story on this car. Something I thought y'all might find interesting, which I may put that in the title too. Just uh let people know whenever you go get a used car, try to bring somebody with you. Or if you don't know much about cars, just bring somebody with you that can kind of look over it with you. Because this is a younger guy. He's probably 19 years old or so. And he did go back to the... Uh, dealership the used car place and tell them they told them that you know there's no warranty on the car and you bought it as is so you got to fix it yourself which I do stuff for a used car a lot and they actually are a really good one they do give a little bit of warranty and try to help the customers out some all right Two, four, six. yep. There's uh, like I said, there's eight torque converter bolts on this. But let me flip it around. I'll show you what uh, reason he's got a two sensor code is because of that right there. 
I'm gonna see if I can fix that for him while I'm underneath here as well. Just try to eliminate that code, but as you can see his cat is gone. They just straight piped it all the way back down to the muffler. So there is a um, there is a bell housing bolt right here, and then one up in here. It's on the back side. These bolts right here are a mount bolt actually, and that's what holds one of the transmission mounts. Which you have to remove that as well. It's going to be a probably a two-part video on here. I'm not going to show the installation of the transmission because if you can get it out, you should be able to get back in. Uh, but I will give y'all some torque specs on the next video. But I'm going to go ahead and keep uh, pressing on on this. Uh, we're going to take some sensor wires off while we're underneath here. So up in here, there should be a ground strap cable right there. And there's a couple of little sensors you should be able to get to. Yeah, let me lower it down and get on the top of the car, like through the engine bay, and we'll take some more stuff off up there. It'd be easier for y'all to see it. So up here, we took the air intake off. It's just the four little clips on the cover. One Phillips head screw right here, and then one uh, vacuum line that goes into the actual tube and it comes right off then we're going to disconnect the battery and disconnect the negative first then I'll disconnect the positive these right here are 12 millimeters and I don't even think the battery is held down I'm gonna take the reservoir off for the radiator then I'm gonna remove the battery tray which looks like one two like two 12s and then a 10 that holds uh, this little bracket on for your AC line. Put that off, you can see we have a lot better view. We have one, two, three, four, five connectors right here. And then we'll have one, two on this side. That's them right here. And we can get this ground cable off right here as well. It's held on with a 10 millimeter. I do have a video showing how these starters come off. I'll put that up in a link up above in case anybody wants to see it it does have another issue that car does I'm actually going to drop this transmission with the starter still attached that is a little trick you can do because it is kind of hard to get to this lower bolt on these starters because of the motor mount or transmission mount and we can move that up out of the way now now we can start removing some of these bell housing bolts they, are, they should all be 17s but you should have like two right here one two on the top and I think two more on the other side. Hold on, let me check real quick. 
then you're gonna have five bell housing bolts you need to get on the top should be two on the front two on the very top and then one that goes through from the engine side down on the back side of the engine but i'm going to take these out and then whenever i get them out i'll come back and show you everything that i've done so far as you can see i got the transmission out i did use my uh front wheel drive engine holder and to get enough lift and like distance to go up and down with i did have to use a chain that had some length to it and normally there's a mount uh lift right here lift mount right here i took that off and there's a hole right here beside the distributor that i put it in just to hold it so you can lift the back of it up and down here is the new one it's right here like i said i took the old one out with the uh, starter already on it and it's just two 15 millimeter bolts after you take them and to me it's just easier to take the starter off after we uh, take the transmission out just so you can get to this lower bolt right here is the old one you can see it had a lot of dirt and grime on it and there is an oil leak uh, coming from it so we'll have to figure that out but you can see it was leaking pretty good and the fluid that come out of it was extremely dark and it had a lot of uh, metals metal not metals but metal in it so the remaining stuff i wanted to show you that you needed to take off is this under brace right here to take it off you're going to have to take the control arm struts out uh strut mounts or strut arms out there's going to be two bolts right here on the lower control arms and then this one right here in the front which i believe all of them are 19 millimeters and they go through the front right here and loosen this one up before you take the back ones off because this will spin i did learn that the hard way <laughs> then you have this front mount right here that attaches to the engine and transmission area where they meet up once you do that you'll have two bolts on the front and then six on the back there's three on each side and when you loosen those the whole assembly will come down and this only weighs probably 10 15 pounds so it's not all that heavy <clears throat> here's the back side this gives you a little bit better view i did forget to take one bolt out and it goes right here oops sorry yeah, it goes right there that was the last bolt i had to take out i was wondering why it wouldn't come out and i forgot there's one right there but we won't forget to put it in here's a better view of the torque converter also like i said there's eight 10 millimeter bolts that go right here then here's where your mount goes right here and i like to take the mount itself off of the transmission instead of the main bolt that way whenever it comes out it gives you a little bit more room to get it out quicker because if it tilts too much you're gonna to have to clear the top of the bracket uh, from the side of the car this is what the back of the engine looks like that's your flywheel or flex plate right there and the torque converter bolts through these little holes right there but that's pretty much it for pulling this out uh, probably forgetting a few things just because i i'm trying to make it where i'm not showing every little step on this uh, on video because it would be a very long video or like two or three parts and i don't want to bore everybody with that so i just wanted to like take take it apart and kind of show you piece by piece what you need to remove but all in all this is a pretty simple transmission to remove for front wheel drive uh, honda does make it fairly easy on people or nissans tend to make it a lot harder because you have to remove the engine and transmission most of the time when you're removing a nissan transmission but we didn't have to break any coolant lines loose we didn't have to do 
really anything to the engine other than the um, intake tubes. And that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, leave them in the comment section. I'll get to them as soon as I can. Like I said, I do know that I probably left out a lot of information uh, that some people may need. But I'm not going to do an installation because it's just the reversal of the installation. So like I said, if you would, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And until next time, y'all have a great day.